I'm Anita Johnson and this exhibition is titled Bodily Felt and it is an exploration of body responses to personal grief um, using felt, hand moulded felt and paper life casts. This exhibition is dedicated to my father Tony Johnson and he died of cancer about two years ago and this started my journey of exploration. The short film about uh, this particular work here. Uh, it's called Apparatus for Inducing Empathy and I made uh, the work uh, in response to contemporary society and the perceived lack of empathy towards other people that I see often around me. to the AIE instructional video, The Apparatus for Inducing Empathy. Lack of empathy towards others is an all too common condition in modern society. Here at the Institute, we've developed an apparatus to assist with this all too common problem. Lack of empathy is a serious medical condition affecting a broad range of people across society without discrimination, it could affect someone close to you. Early detection and treatment is paramount to a person's health. Symptoms of lack of empathy include acute apathy towards others' needs, lack of emotional response, slowed heart rate and a cold chest. The first component when administering AIE are the feet. These shoes allow the person to step into another person's walk of life. 
it induces a sense of contact with others. To administer these shoes, what we need to do is remove them from the case They are a convenient one size fits all. You adjust them by the adjusting to the length of the person's foot, placing the person's foot in the shoe, then switching on the switch. The second part of the apparatus that is applied is the headpiece. Firstly, you place the piece gently on the person's head, then secure with a chin strap. When functional, the apparatus flashes a red light on the side. This indicates that the images are being supplied through the eyepieces and the audio cues through the earpieces. Once the person has reached optimal level of empathy, the light on top will turn on. The third component of AIE is the heart. To apply this part of the apparatus, you use the flange end to attach to the person's heart then you blow gentle breath into the spout end. This warms the chest cavity and also increases the heart back to normal rhythm. AIE is a revolution in that most cases will be cured with only one application of the apparatus. Severe cases, however, may require repeat applications. If you know someone who is displaying the symptoms of lack of empathy, early detection and treatment is vital. Please contact our 24-hour hotline. Thank you. Thank you for calling AIE. Please hold the line. Your level of empathy is important to us. It's a fictitious invention. I, I wish it did work. Um, <laughs> but most of my apparatuses um, don't work on purpose. So they're trying to get people to think a little deeper about the issues that I'm interested in. Uh, this box, it, it contains the apparatus for inducing empathy. Uh, I made it from felt. Felt is a, um, a good insulation material. Um, I'm actually a felt maker as well as a sculptor. Um, the inside, the wood inside, is from two drawers out of a cupboard. Um, when you open the box up, it's got an instruction about how to apply the apparatus. Um, it's to be administered only in emergency situations where you encounter someone with acute uh, case of apathy. So <laughs> the feet, feet um, I carved from wood and they come out and they adjust to the size of the person's foot and you just switch on the switch. And the idea is that you um, to walk in another person's uh, shoes, to have a sense of another person's experience of life. Um, and this is the heart warming apparatus. So this end goes onto the patient's chest, and I blow into this end, and I warm the patient's heart. Um, this is for people with a cold heart <laughs> to other people's uh, plights. And this is the head apparatus. Whoop. So it's um, lined with felt as well as an insulation material. So the eye pieces uh, emit images from that person's uh, life experience and the audio earpieces um, uh, 
provide the audio experience and then once the optimum level of empathy is reached the light bulb on the top switches on. The idea behind this work um, is to create a fictitious invention that uh, if it applied to a person or a patient it administers empathy, it induces empathy into that person. Um, so the kit comes complete with an instruction um, list, how to apply the apparatus, how to identify cases of apathy and then it's got a uh, disclaimer down the bottom that no responsibility will be taken for the level of empathy reached as a result of using this apparatus. Many of the works that I make um, are humorous but they also have a uh, tragic side to them, They're a bit more serious uh, concern. But I'm quite interested in the um, fine line between comedy and tragic circumstances. <laughs>
broad a range of practice in where I do carving and casting and assemblage. It has a nice sense of movement about it, that it, it travels in circles. Uh, the doll's hand I've I found um, and have used all parts of this particular doll and cast them into all different materials, but the bronze is very interesting in bringing something of a preciousness to a plastic doll that's essentially someone would think was uh, not important. Uh, this is off a, um, a handle, a door handle, um, in a part of a machinery. But I bring these inanimate objects that, um, and try to create a sense of life or movement or an to animate them, I guess. So in creating a work, I, I continuously work towards um, the work having a sense of a, its own life, liveliness. Now this particular work um, I've worked with the idea of nomadism or tra travelling, um, wandering for a long time. Uh, I think essentially all human beings have that sense of wandering, um, what, what is the purpose of life. And uh, I made this work out of, uh, again, out of disparate objects. And so there's parts of copper bowls and a vase that was made from pewter. Um, they're all junk objects that I collect from the, the tip. Um, often they're damaged and I've cut, cut them and beat them with a hammer into shape and then riveted. Uh, yeah. Uh, this um, particular one is called Tree. <laughs> um, there's a, uh, I suppose it's a post-apocalyptic sort of suggestion that maybe this is the last tree, the last precious tree left. It's, um, it's kind of a cyborg tree. It's got parts of the tree uh, made up of machine parts and uh, yeah, there's a little watch uh, wind-up connection mechanism there. This work is uh, made from collected objects. Even the tree is made from one of my cooking spoons that I broke uh, after so many years. It was my favourite cooking spoon. Um, but these are from uh, different parts of collected objects. So um, parts of machinery um, and parts out of a clock. This is from uh, another clock, a jewel maker's turn. Uh, this is off a candelabra. So I qu you work with quite disparate objects from uh, different life, life uh, passages, I guess, and bring them all together to create a new life for these objects. This is a work that I have currently in the Willara Small Sculpture Prize. Uh, it runs until the 1st of November at the Willara Council Chambers. Uh, it's called Wallop. I made this work from um, a lot of tennis rackets. I had all my friends out looking for wooden tennis rackets. Uh, and I've cut and uh, doweled and glued and remodelled them so that it appears as if it's one tennis racket that's gone a bit loopy. Um, essentially tennis rackets are, are kind of ordinary objects of a, quite an orderly game. There's a lot of rules and order about tennis and um, I wanted to subvert that and make one that was a bit unruly. Yes, a wild, a tennis racket gone wild. Um, and I've incorporated a uh, part of a chair or um, a curly part of a chair onto the end of the tennis racket and a, a bit of a sinister looking uh, leather strapped uh, spike, uh, spiky end to it as if it's going to whack a passerby. But, yeah. Um, I like to incorporate a sense of humour into my works, but there's also a kind of a sinister or um, more serious side to the work. This work is called Gunship. Um, it's fairly large work. It's got two drawers that open out from the front of it. Um, I made this work out of 
whole collection of different sorts of things riveted together. And the work is designed to look a bit like a bomb, I guess, but in opening the drawers there's also a suggestion of um, a whole series of coffins. Um, I'll just show you this is inside. So these are the drawers. When you open the drawers out, there are a um, whole series of uh, people inside. But in the top drawer there are combatants and in the bottom drawer there are civilians. Um, these are the civilians and uh, they're made in the shape of bullets. So it's a suggestion that um, war is not a game. And uh, each bullet there's casualties for either side. And so the work also um, appears quite humorous from a distance but once you get close to it and realise the uh, content of the work it gets a bit more serious. Um, these particular ones are made again from a plastic toy and I did some casting and remodelling uh, and they're cast in bronze. This is a photo of a work called uh, Parrot Caravan. Uh, there's a suggestion here of uh, humour and tragedy at the same time. The idea of a caravan is that you have a certain sense of freedom that you can uh, travel with your house attached to yourself. But there's also a double bind in that, that you can only take a caravan so many certain places. So there's a freedom but there's also a, um, a limitation to that freedom. So I made this work. This parrot, he carries his home with him. And inside the caravan he's also got, uh, it's designed with a sky, it's painted with the sky inside so that when he goes to sleep at night he can imagine that he's free. Uh, again, it's, it seems like a humorous story but it's actually um, quite sad and poignant I guess at the same time.